friends so today i'm going to talk about my morgan stanley interview experience now i have actually applied and interviewed for morgan stanley on two different occasions first occasion was when i had just finished my masters and i was applying for a junior developer kind of a position second time was with, uh, the time when i was already working for a bank called rbc it's a royal bank of canada it is the biggest bank in canada at the moment and i had or i was already working there for three plus years when i applied for the second round of interview in the both the occasions i was not able to clear the interview because i used to suck at technical interviews and i was not well prepared but if i have to give that interview today knowing what i know after running this destination fang channel for the past year i would probably just kill in that interview but that's a conversation for second topic now the way i have formatted this video is that first i'm going to talk about my junior developer level position interview where i uh, only had like two rounds of interviews and i'm going to give every single explanation about that second time the was much more complex because it was for a senior position and i had actually done back to back four different interviews and all after completing all four rounds of interviews i was actually pretty confident but unfortunately i didn't get it so let's get started with the first round or first job interview when the for the first job interview i mentioned that i had just completed my masters from my university and morgan stanley had actually came to our university asking that because they were seeking to recruit something like 10 different folks on the junior position and uh, it was a really great opportunity so first of all our college coordinator our university coordinator reached out to every single one of us saying that morgan stanley is going to come here and uh, attend their seminar so after we attended their seminar they told us that what is going to be the interview process and the process was pretty straightforward they were going to do one interview this is going to be like very a light-hearted round of interview to know that at least you are aware about the basic concepts of the computer science or not and uh, typically they would ask some questions related to like object oriented programming and how like multi-threading works how concurrency works so nothing practical uh, all the questions were just like a single line or two line answer and uh, i was able to clear that quite easily and after that they actually called us to their montreal office and yes this was past covid uh, sorry this was pre covid this was actually in i think 2016 so that time they called us in in their montreal office the office was beautiful it's located in the downtown area and the whole vibe was pretty uh, happening so i was pretty happy with the interview now when we actually got to the interview place there was like a big room and the big room had different different set of like uh, chairs and tables set up where different interviewers are going to do one on one with all the folks who had came on that day okay so this was the first question that my interviewer asked me and the interview was about to last for 40 ish minutes at that time now the question was that best time to buy and sell stock now if you are familiar with this problem this is a really popular problem on lead code and basically we are given an array with bunch of different stock prices and we need to calculate that by the end of the day what is the maximum stock profit we can make so if we just take a look at this example the stock prices given are now amongst these stock prices we can clearly see that if we buy at this position and if we sell at this position the profit we are going to make is going to be five bucks and this is going to be the maximum profit we would be able to achieve now this is not a simple question where we simply need to calculate the difference between like the smallest value and the largest value because if we do that the smallest value in this case is going to be value number one and the largest value is going to be value number seven but we cannot buy stock at value number one and then try to sell it at value number seven because this is actually a time bound sequence and this is not how stock uh, exchange works and uh, that we we cannot sell before we can actually buy like in real life we can but in the problem we cannot so we will have to take care of that the stock has to be bought before it could it could be sell, sold now the problem was this one but interviewer intentionally changed the wording of the problem the interviewer told me that uh, suppose there is a continuous stream of profit and loss or stock prices for any single array and the stock price can increase or decrease or it can happen something now the moment market closes you will have to calculate that if you correct if you bought the stock at the right time and if you sold the stock at the right time what is the maximum profit you can make which is going to be the answer five in this case now the important word in this problem is that when the market closes because the moment market closes all of the data that was already provided becomes a static data and we do not need to take care of the continuous profit because this is not like a continuous stream anymore 
but interviewer intentionally put that wording now the first mistake i did is that i did not ask clarification questions and that caused me the interview completely because i was thinking it from a different perspective and the interviewer had different thing in mind so that was definitely i was meant to fail in that whole position now the other thing that interviewer intentionally did is that he did not correct me because interviewer love leaving these uh, these kind of questions in a blank and uh, basically you, they want you to see that whether you are able to capture them and ask clarification questions or not again okay. going back to the question now for this question if you have to solve it i have already solved this in my channel and i'm going to post it in the description but meanwhile uh, let's just take the brute force approach so brute force approach what it is going to be that we calculate the profit for every single buy and sell possibility and whichever the maximum profit we have been able to find we return that as the answer now this brute force approach will give us the correct answer but the problem with this one is going to be that it will solve this problem in big of n square time which is not what we want the more efficient approach is that if we use two pointers and for the two pointers we are going to uh, also keep track of the lowest buying price that we have been able to find and also maximum selling price we have been able to find and we can do this like uh, starting pointer can be here and ending pointing pointer can be here and we can have them come towards each other because i mentioned earlier that this is a time bound sequence so that is why these two will come towards each other and every single time whenever we find like a smaller uh, sell price we will try to calculate the profit whenever we find the higher buy price we will try to calculate the profit and whichever the maximum profit is we will return that as the answer this will solve the problem in big of n time and uh, this is the this is going to be the most optimal way to solve this problem so i didn't do it so definitely i was meant to flunk and i failed the interview and a real story like you can uh, check this with two of my very good friends i was so sure that i was going to get a job at morgan stanley at for this interview that i was pretty excited for that and the moment i found out that i actually got rejected i like literally cried a bit because i was like i was desperate looking for job and i couldn't find a job so it but whatever happens happens for a good reason i am at a happy place right now and this this is also an advice for every single one of you that don't lose hope because good things will come for you for sure now this concludes my first uh, interview that i did for morgan stanley now let's just move on to the second interview now in the second interview i already mentioned that there are four different rounds for that interview i did now uh, the second interview was for a senior position and also the problems were much more complex and the interview was dedicated towards a specific product now what the product is and what the team was interviewing me i'm not going to disclose the team that is interviewing me but product i will explain you later in the video now for the first round the person taking interview she was very good and uh, she was very like one of the nicest person i have i have spoken with in an interview and she actually asked me pretty easy problems on link uh, lead code which i was already familiar with so the first problem she asked me was literally the two sum problem she told me that if you are given like bunch of different values inside an array and you are given a target value how would you be able to find that which two values uh, generate the total of target value so again solving this problem is pretty easy uh, suppose we are given bunch of different values like 5 3 8 1 2 and we are told that we need to find the target sum to be 9 so definitely the answer is going to be 8 and 1 now how we, would we able to calculate the answer the brute force way is pretty simple that we calculate every single possibility and we come up we try to come up with the answer but brute force way doesn't work all the time and it is it gives the answer in big of n square time so better approach is sorting if we sort all the values then we can actually use binary search on the array to find the remaining value for any single element and we can actually solve this problem big of n log n time but again this is also not a, the most appropriate answer the most appropriate answer is to create a hash set or a hash map and inside the hash set you would keep track of all the values that you have visited so far and eventually you would keep on going on so suppose we we have this value number 9 we are trying to find so say for example we are at po this position number 3 we will try to see that if this 3 has to be part of the answer what answer what value must present inside the remaining array the value 6 has to be present in the remaining array if it is not present which means 3 is not the part of the answer 
but we are going to put three as in the hash set so far because this uh, these are the values we have visited so far so five and three are going to be initial entries then we will have entry eight and then when we get to the position one we will try to see that okay in order to make the target some nine uh, if one has to be part of the answer then eight has to be present inside the remaining array and eight is already present inside the hash set so we can actually return uh, eight and one as the answer and this is how this would be the optimal way to solve this problem i completely solved this pretty easily no issues with that and interviewer liked it uh, again the time complexity for this approach is going to be big of n space complexity is also going to be big of n because we are using an additional hash set i explained everything perfectly she really liked it it took me around 10 minutes to do all of this now next uh second question she asked she thought that i think i call it being lazy or being kind you can keep it whatever you way you like but second question she asked was the extension of the two sum problem and that is the two sum two problem now in this two sum two problem uh, basically we need to do the same thing but in this case the given input array is actually going to be sorted and uh, here it says one index array i was not asked all of these complications but uh, suppose we are given the array like one three five eight and we need to see that whether our, our target sum suppose is that is going to be value number six then we need to check that whether six can be made using these two values or not and of course six can be made over here and again even for this problem you would think that we can use hash set to solve this problem in the exact manner and big of n time and yes you are absolutely correct we can use hash set but the question that is provided over here or the condition that is provided over here this is the same condition my interviewer also gave me that we cannot use extra space which means we cannot use a hash set in this position so again the answer is quite simple to solve this one uh, if we use the sorting property we can actually solve this problem big of n log n time because for any single value we can do a binary search and try to see that whether the remaining value is present or not but this is not the most op uh, best approach uh, there exists an even better approach and that even better approach is again two pointers so for this two pointers how we are going to do is that we are going to have a starting pointer over here ending pointer over here and we will try to see that what is the sum of these two values so currently the sum is 8 plus 1 so sum is 9 so 9 is actually too high compared to our target value 6 so in this case we will have to move end pointer on the left hand side and again now 5 plus 1 so 5 plus 1 would give us the answer 6 and this is what we can return immediately so the solution can be achieved in big of n times and things works as beautifully as possible so there are no issues with that again for this problem i was also able to come up with the optimal solution in 10 minutes after completing all the coding and everything so this works this worked in my favor that interviewer asked me quite easy questions and i was, I was pretty happy with this now the round was supposed to be for 40 minutes but i had only completed 20 minutes so far so i still had 20 minutes left in my interview and my interviewer was expecting me to spend more time on the technical challenges but since we finished everything she started asking me behavioral questions and for the behavioral questions she asked me questions like if you have disagreement with your team member how would you resolve that if you have disagreement with your manager how would you resolve that if you so the standard behavioral questions like you tell me a time when your project was running late and uh, what are the efforts you took to change that and now looking back if you have to do things differently how would you do it so there are a bunch of questions something like this she asked and don't worry eventually in the future i'm going to make an entire series on different behavioral problems so i'm going to show you that what kind of behavioral problems can be asked and how can you solve that but that is a discussion for future now let's move on to the round number two now this round number two was good and bad in both the manners why it was good because the first question in the round number two was asked is that they asked me to reverse a single linked list now again this problem i have already solved on my channel i'm going to post all the videos that i have already solved in the description so you can check it out from there but quickly if we just have to reverse a singly linked list what is the issue with the singly linked list the issue is that we do not have any way for us to go back in the reverse direction because we only know the front direction so the logical thing to do is that we are going to keep track of the head element and we are going to create a dummy node and using this dummy node every single time we will move on to the next element we are going to mark the previous element as the head element and then we are going to point this element to point towards the previous element rather than pointing towards the next element and continuously we will keep on repeatedly doing this and in the end we would be able to return 
the reverse li uh, link list and this head element is now going to be present on the last element so i also explained this i was also it took me some time for coding because coding has not been my strong forte but i was also able to solve this problem in some bit like I, I guess 15 to 20 minutes because i know even the problem is not that difficult but it took me some time to get there now for the rest of the 20 minutes the interviewer had actually scheduled like bunch of different sql problems for me that if you are given this sql query how would you do it if you are given this sql query how would you solve it if you are given this sql query and i flung that completely like i was not able to come up with the answer even for few simple problems because i never had to use sql in my day-to-day -day job and i was not prepared for that so this uh, second round was actually a bad round for me but i was like okay anyways let me focus on the task ahead and one more thing all the four rounds they were actually back to back so there was no time uh, in between like of course interviewer would come in and he would say that hey if you want to go ahead drink water or do something you can do it but uh, in overall it was little bit slightly high intensity situation but qu questions were not that difficult now comes the round three round three i enjoyed the most because in the round three first question they ask is that find the missing number now if you see this problem finding the missing number this one says that if, if we are given an array that contains bunch of different letters so suppose we are given an array something like that like 0 3 1 2 something like this and 5 so in this case since there are five elements there is one missing element one missing number in between and the missing number has to be 4 because 4 is the only element that is not present from 0 to 5 all the rest are present so this was again very easy problem very similar problem so again the solution for this one was quite simple we can simply use a hash set to populate with all the values that are currently present inside the array and then we can uh, simply run a loop and inside the loop we can run it from like 0 to all the n value that is present and for every single element we can check that whether that element is present in the hash set or not and that would give us the correct answer that which element is the missing number and uh, i told them that this is going to be like big of n solution and interviewer was quite happy with this i was able to come up with this solution in like 10 to 15 minutes and not a big deal but then came the interesting part and the interesting part is that the position i was applying for that team was dealing with like commodity commodity trading so what commodity trading is that it is pretty similar to stocks trading and where for every single time there are going to be two different parties one party is willing to pay some money for any product or any commodity they are trying to buy and the selling party is also willing to accept some money and we will need to find the correlation between them so he asked me that if i have to design uh wh wh how do i say if i have to design like a matching or a trading platform uh what kind of logic i'm going to imply Im implement and in this case things became quite interesting the discussion was very nice I was not able to come up with the optimal solution or the optimal approach but I thought I asked the right questions because I suggested that we could have a bunch of like couple of queues first queue is that uh, and we can use heap for that and uh, for both the heaps we are going to keep track of that for any single commodity what is the maximum value one uh, buyer is allowed is able to pay and what is the minimum value uh the seller is allowed to accept and the moment we find a match or the moment we find a similarity we would be able to make the trade if we don't find the similarity then we will have to keep on either decreasing the value or increasing the value in some fashion and then we would be able to generate our matching platform so he was sort of okay and then he had few other ideas and i was not able to come up with the most optimal way but at least it was really interesting for me to learn so i really like this their system design part their question was really unique and then came the last interview the fourth round now for the fourth round this interview was actually with the hiring manager uh, for that particular product group i think she was uh, at a director level so the moment i got the director interview i thought that i am pretty sure to get the job because directors typically don't involve in the interview unless they are not sure that whether they want to move, keep, move forward with the candidate or not and uh, this round was mostly behavioral questions and also like she explained me what the product is what their team does how their team operates uh, what are the things she has been doing so far what are her expectations 
what kind of employee she has worked for so far she had few uh, alumni from rbc the bank i was working from and she was pretty happy with their performance so she also was giving me good signals positive signals and then in the end she told me that after a couple of days she will get back to me but after a couple of days this time again i did not get the job but this time i was not actually disappointed i was pretty happy because at least i had a good interview experience and uh, this was a good learning experience i never thought that i would make a video on that but uh, here is the video and i hope you guys find it useful overall i was pretty happy with the whole interview process and though i got rejected things work out the way they did and uh, that is why i'm here today i'm pretty happy so i hope you also uh, find success in your upcoming interviews and uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for me